Hey guys, I'm back and we've got survival box and I want to show you something that I just noticed. I took off the shipping label, but this is how the box came labeled. So they're on to me, I guess. And this bothers me. And here's why. So number one, Jason, you know, great channel supporter. I call him out for it. I shout him out for it all the time. He's the one that pays for this box, has it shipped here and stuff. But how do they know? Because Jason didn't do this. This comes straight from the company. Now, granted, I, I'm not the most James Bond dude, right? But if they're labeling this and they know that this box is coming to me, how do I know that this is, I don't know. That's weird. That's weird and a little disturbing, a little creepy. But anyway, we've got Survival Box for January 2023. I haven't even messed that up more than 10 times yet so far, that 2023. So we're going to open up this box and see what we've got. I guess he is getting the knife of the month again. What is going on? Weird. Weird. Um, okay. Well, let's take a look at everything. You know what I'm concerned about? Because I've had this happen before with some boxes, and people have, have, have said it. If a company knows I'm going to be making videos, they might send me something different than other people got. That has, that has happened. And viewers have called it out saying, hey, you got a different box than other people did. Anyway. I'm just hoping that there's nothing sketchy going on if they've figured out that I'm doing this. So, let's take a look at what's what's up with all this. And uh, once again, great packing material, great fire starting material. So, verifying we got everything on the card. According to the card, what does it say? Earthquake? Stranded after earthquake. That's the theme of this box. I do enjoy that they have some very specific themes in survival box. So according to the card, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven items, and then a knife of the month, which we'll look at at the end. Now, uh, I, this is just my question. Stranded after the earthquake, you never know, this is what it says, I'm gonna read it to you. You never know when or where an earthquake will strike. Well, you kind of know where. We sort of know where earthquake zones are prone, right? Like science has figured out kind of where we can expect them. It doesn't mean it always happens there, but we sort of know. So it's important to be prepared to survive the ordeal beforehand. These gears and tools, that's what it says, these gears and tools, are designed for your convenience. Now, this is just a really, um, it's an interesting theme because I feel like this is such a wide ranging thing. So I'm really, I am really interested in what it is that they decided you needed if you're stranded after the earthquake, because there's so much. So this is really, I'm really actually genuinely curious about this. So let's start. So the first thing is uh, Coglin's light sticks. So chem lights, snap lights little light sticks um 12 era green now i've talked about these all the time there are action i've said this too there are actual military issue chem lights that are the generally the exact same thing as the ones you buy civilian ones um there are some that are different there are actually infrared ones you know for using with night vision goggles they're different they come in a box they come in like a you know the standard white box with black lettering that is like um light sticks comma chemical reaction comma you know whatever it's um they come 12 to a box or 10 to a box or whatever um but these things i think are good to have of course the kids just love to play with them in an emergency or in a, an outdoors camping situation they're good they you know some of them provide light not a lot of light but enough in a small area but they're really good for marking things is what i is what i find believe it or not 
there's going to be someone out there that doesn't know what the I know mode line 99.9 percent .9 of us know what these are but there's someone out there that doesn't um, so you know a lot of people treat these like toys I remember anybody ever go to a, a skating rink anybody that old roller skating yeah so we had a place uh, in Long Island where us city kids would go uh, called laces to go roller skating and the big cool thing was you know because it was like they had like the low lighting and everything you'd get these things to, to play with that was my first introduction to these really you know um, but you there's a glass vial in there uh, full of the reactant and you break it shake it and this thing is luminescent now you can slow down that reaction to preserve it a little bit if you put it in the freezer but these things expire they the chemical reaction you know runs its course it doesn't it's got a shelf life not a shelf life a uh, a, a lifespan a half life a uh, <laughs> uh, whatever um, this is so you can attach it to stuff obviously they come in different colors um, these ones happen to be green green are some of the brighter ones they have white light yellow um, blue uh, red like I said, infrared ones, but this is essentially the exact same thing that you'd get military issued. They also have small ones, they have very big ones, but these are good to have in any kind of uh, emergency kit. I'll, I will say, they, they do their job. So I don't know what kind of, there's never values on this in this box, but um, uh, they do have a shelf life. They do sooner or later, you know, years and years, but they do over time, you know, they, they get old and you snap them and they don't quite glow very good but anyway that's not bad that's not bad i could get i you know in any kind of survival box or whatever um while you can buy these at walmart or buy them online or whatever it's always good to i mean i'll never sit near it having more of these they're they're cool so there we go uh, next the swat tourniquet it's a oh it's a training tourniquet swat t Hmm, this training tourniquet is a valuable tool to teach and practice using a SWAT T stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. Blue is the universal training color to avoid. A Actually, well, I don't think that's necessarily true. The blue is the universal training color. Red is also universal training color for certain things. Hmm, stranded after the earthquake. And this is a training device. Not to use when you're stranded after the earthquake. I could see you might get injured you know in the earthquake and then you need to use this thing it smells good it smells kind of like a snack i don't know um This is to uh, mark, but, yeah. And then there's instructions. I've never used one of these SWAT tourniquets, never. Um, there it is, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, I don't know how this training tourniquet differs from the real thing. So now I got to ask, because I know there's, there's folks out there with, you know, lots of experience with different things that I don't have experience with. So how does the SWAT compare to other things? Um, tell me about the SWAT tourniquet. And, you know, it's great that you have the training thing, but how about they give you a training one and then a real one to use in the emergency? You know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. Um, I basically this is a you know what this is this is like a theroband this is like I've used I've used these things in physical therapy for my shoulder it literally is like the same thing with some instructions printed on it um, but I, I do not know is the only difference that this one is blue and the real one is a different color I don't know what is, what is up Who, who's used this in real life fill us in help me out because um, I mean if you can use this for real cool I, is, is it is it just that this one is blue? Is that the only difference? I don't know. 
I really don't know, so I can't comment on it. I feel like, yes, training tools are important, but if you're gonna give us a training one, give us a real one to use, you know, in the earthquake apocalypse, right? Yeah? Okay. So that's gotta go in like meh for being only half an item to me. All right. Um, and of course, one of these windstorm whistles, I, I'm not gonna, yes, we've seen these before and they are very loud and they work very well. Um, this is good in all sorts of emergency stuff to uh, summon help, to communicate. Um, yeah, these are, I mean, they, they, they definitely do what they are supposed to do. Um, okay, I got nothing else to say about this. Not very excited about this box. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I'm gonna jump ahead here. So again, emergency Mylar thermal blanket. We got another space blanket. I think we have, um, 525,600 blankets at this point. Um, now, yes, true. There are people, this might be their first box. I don't have any of them. Um, and it is true that this is valid for any emergency situation where you are worried about hyper hypothermia, not hyperthermia, hypothermia, shock, anything like that. But um, boy, boxes just love throwing these things in there. Um, why don't they just, why don't they, you know what? At the beginning of every subscription, they should just give you a gross of these and call it good, and they don't have to put it in the boxes anymore. Um, but yes, on the other hand, sir, you know, what is this? What is this stranded after the earthquake? Who knows what weather conditions are? Who knows what your medical condition is? Sure. I mean, as much as I hate getting these over and over and over and over and over, they do serve a legit purpose when you need them. So there we go. Um, the Adventure Medical Kit First Aid. This is 2.0. This is for one to four people. Oh, you guys know how I'm going to feel about this. I like that it's sealed, though, until you open it. Guess what? I opened it. So um, let's see what we've got. Bonus. Register your kit and receive 25% off your first refill order. That sounds like that sounds like an ice pack in there. You guys know how I uh, I am prone to talk about medical stuff, so I'll tell you what. After I do this all and I'm editing, I'm gonna yeah, I'll I'll put in a, a thing a time code where you can skip my medical rant. But let's go over everything that comes in here. So one two four people they say this treats let's take a look so number one you got a little compass which is interesting because that's not a medical device at all but i guess it's nice that they give it to you uh, what is this oh this is all medications okay so interesting um let's talk about the bag first of all very lightweight nylon i mean very lightweight nylon Bag's not meant to be rugged. I get it. It's not like a super survival kit. It is a first aid kit. Cool. Um, the thing about this that I like is there's room for you to put more stuff in here if you need to. Um, so, yeah. So this pocket is wound care, burns, blisters. Uh, this pocket is medication. I guess this gives you a little bit of, a little bit of first aid knowledge there too on what to do. Not gonna. I'm not going to comment on that right now. Not even. Let's start start with the medication that they give you. So, ibuprofen, Motrin, um, Advil, um, all, you know, all, all the same stuff. So each one of these is, I'm guessing, they're 200 milligram tablets. Yep. So two tablets, 200 milligrams, which any military veteran slaps at in uh, because you know they routinely give us these 800 milligram horse pills, and they're like, take two. Um, so stuff's good for pain, uh, has some fever releasing, uh, reducing capability and anti-inflammatory stuff. Okay. Um, what's next? What is this? Uh, triple antibiotic ointment. Okay. Get four of those. Pretty good. Um, people use this incorrectly all the time. This is, this is for like surface use. 
and cuts and scrapes, mild cuts and scrapes. This is not for like, you don't put this inside a gaping wound. It doesn't work like that. And it's, it actually could be more harmful than good. Um, really what you should do is um, put this on, on like the, the, uh, the dressing that you're gonna put like on, on a Band-Aid or something like that. Don't, you don't wanna, it, it, it's not made for, it's made for a, a simple um, disinfectant of, um, it's not made for a complex wound. It, it's very, very surface level stuff. Um, and I've seen people try to like, you know, with a la like a deep laceration or an incision, try to put it in there and it's, that's not what it's for. And you won't like it when you do that. Sting and bite pad, what does this have? Benzocaine and isopropyl alcohol. All right. So benzocaine is a mild um, anesthetic and isopropyl alcohol is alcohol. So you just wipe these on. Okay, great. Works on the surface only. What else do we have? Acetaminophen, commonly known as Tylenol. Uh, a little bit better at reducing fevers than the ibuprofen. Uh, also has an anti-inflammatory uh, and pain relieving kind of effect there. Uh, diphenhydramine is also known as Benadryl. Um, very good for allergic reactions, uh, which is really what you have it for. It's also um, in the right doses, a good sedative, um, but I'm sure they're giving it to you for allergic reaction stuff. And then aspirin, antipyretic, uh, fever reducing, um, pain relief doesn't have the anti-inflammatory strength of like the acetaminophen or the ibuprofen, um, but it's still it's still good for that kind of stuff. Uh, pain relief and fever relief. So, some very basic over-the-counter medications. I would I would do just a quick you know Google search on 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 the do's and don'ts for each of these. Um, especially if you're gonna be giving it to somebody else. But like I said, they're all over the counter. So the biggest thing you gotta worry about is somebody might be allergic to one of the different things and that's what the Benadryl could be really good for. So in our wound care burns and blisters, so we have a combi pad. So this is just a big gauze pad. That's really all it is. Um, sterile, can be put right over a wound, cool. Are these just alcohol? These are all sterile alcohol prep pads. Um, okay. Uh, if you put this uh, directly on a burn or on somebody's open wound, they're gonna hate you for it, but sure. Uh, some moleskin for blister um, treatment. Okay, look up how to use that. There's a couple different ways you could do that, um, but this is good for preventing blisters if you use it in the right way. And it's once you've got a blister, you can use this to help reduce that irritation and stuff. Um, we've got some cloth medical tape. I don't like cloth medical tape. I'd rather have something called 3M Transpore, which is a great medical tape. You can look that up too. That's just my personal preference. Um, bleeding and CPR. So here's another guide on how to treat that. I'm not going to get into it. A number of different plastic strips, what other people might call band-aids, but um, different shapes and sizes. Nice assortment. Got a knuckle one here, you got one large, and some different sizes of just regular plastic strips. And I've said this before, in, in reg, you know, first aid kind of stuff, this is what you're gonna use more than anything else. So it's nice they give you a bunch. Um, these are two by two sterile gauze pads for putting on top of wounds. Uh, two by threes and then four by fours, all different kinds of gauze that you would use um, to put on top of something. The difference, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again, the difference between a dressing and a bandage, your dressings should always be sterile because this is what goes directly on top of the wound. And then the bandage is what secures the dressing, you know, to the, to the body. Um, so ideally you want to work with all sterile stuff, but the dressing is really what needs to be sterile because that's what's going to come directly in contact with the, uh, the exposed body part or whatever. In this other pouch, so this gauze roll, dressing. So put your sterile, your sterile, um, I'm sorry, bandage. Put your sterile dressing on and then you wrap your gauze bandage over it. Hold it on for example. Uh, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the much abbreviated medical spiel here. So 
got some Q-tips and you know, these are good for applying ointment on stuff or um, just cleaning off, you know, even with just like some clean water, cleaning off abrasions. Abrasion is a fancy word for a, a scrape, um, like road rash, stuff like that. Um, this is survival instructions. Okay, cool. Got a survival whistle. <clears throat> got a couple safety pins. You can use this to hold a, a dressing together. Um, you know, a dressing can, oh, I keep, oh, dressing, sorry, bandage. Um, you know, you can rip a shirt up and, and make a, a bandage out of that. And you can use these to hold like a sling or something together. Got some precision tweezers. Yep, got one ice pack. It's the kind where you squeeze, chemical reaction stays cold for a little bit. And then uh, these scissors look terrible. They just look awful. I don't know what you do with them. A little biohazard bag and a pair of gloves. Okay, so it is a very basic first aid kit. Um, it comes with a lot of band-aids. That's important. Comes with a pair of gloves. I would definitely, I mean, I always say this, put more gloves. Put more gloves in, in your first aid kit because, you know, golden rule back from EMS days. If it's wet and it's not yours, don't touch it. Um, and especially if you're going to be taking care of other people you want lots and lots of gloves you don't want to touch anything no bodily fluids not a bad kit i you know i'm i'm trying to be trying to calm down with all the medical ranting and raving i definitely if this is your one survival medical kit after an earthquake i want more <laughs> i want a lot more but for a basic first aid kit not too bad not too bad Mm. Okay, moving on. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try, trying to let it go. I'm trying to let it go. Um, XMRE food. So this is an MRE, not an MRE bag. It looks like it has all the stuff from an MRE. I have a video showing an MRE. Maybe I'll put a thing in the corner. Um, you know, real MREs come in a thick plastic pouch. Um, this looks like a combination of issued stuff and commercially available stuff. So let's see. So you got lemon lime flavored, we used to call beverage base powder. Oh, beverage base powder. There it is on the other side. It's like Gatorade. It's like Kool-Aid. It's like a Gatorade powder you mix up. Um, crackers. It looks like the same standard uh, roof shingle crackers, just in a tinfoil thing, you know. The the issued package is like brown, but same thing. Frosted strawberry toaster pastry. Pop tart. Issued pop tart. Mixed fruit. This looks straight out of an MRE. And it's probably not too bad. Um, this is the lamest. The real MRE spoon spork thing is it's a spoon really. It's much higher quality. Um, what is this? Barbecue toasted corn kernels. This is like beer nuts or like uh, corn nuts. What is this? Heating pad? Heating pad inside. Remove heating pad from this pouch before use. This is a little bit different. So you put the heating pad in here. Um, oh, it, so this is kind of just like the, the traditional MRE heater. The issued one has some stuff in it and you just add water. I guess this you got to put the heating pad in there and then add water and then you can put your MRE thing in. Um, hash brown potatoes with bacon, pepper, and onions is the meal. I don't know why they put it together like this. Like, is this cheaper? Is this... Uh, just get an MRE. I mean, it's it's got... You know what? It doesn't have the accessory packet. It doesn't have a li nice little... Uh, the accessory packet has like toilet paper and salt and pepper and sometimes a little Tabasco sauce and sometimes some candy. But it's standard MRE stuff. Um, this is made so that you can, there's enough calories in here for one whole day. You might be hungry still based on the amount of food, but there's enough calories that this will last you a whole day. And and they teach you the proper way to eat an MRE in order where you go through the carbs first, you know, for the energy, like if, if you know, if you have to, if you have to break it up and make it last all day. And uh, 
you know, there, there's there's a whole method to the madness. Of course, if you, you know, have enough food meals all day, you can just eat the whole thing all in one sitting. There's between 2,000 and 2,500 calories in every MRE, though. And you can buy actual issued MREs from a lot of places uh, and, and store them, you know, for survival purposes. It's just interesting that it came like this. I don't know. Then finally, we have the, what is this? The Osage River 1800 Lumen LED Headlamp. Rated IPX4 for water resistance, okay. 10 watt LED bulb. Um, so it has two batteries, which is cool. Comes with this charger that looks like an old ass Nokia cell phone charger. Um, and a car charger. And well, I guess we're gonna have to get into it, check it out. So it comes with a USB charger, comes with this old style plug-in charger, and it comes with a car charger, which is cool. So you have plenty of ways to plug this thing in and charge your two giant ass batteries, 18 uh, 650s, 2200 milliamp hour batteries. These are some of the most awkward types of lamps just because you have the battery pack on the back of your head and the lamp on the front. But um, with this kind of battery, you should get a good amount of light and power. You know what I mean? Um, even if it is a bit awkward. So how do we open this up is the question. This is just... Ah! Oh, it doesn't give you spare batteries. I thought it gave you a spare. It does not. You got to put both of these in here. This thing must give you some damn good light. So this is, just by nature of this silicone kind of cover, should give you good water resistance there. Um, that doesn't feel very secure, though. And I can you're going to feel this on the back of your head. There's very thin um, and... Is this... Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to turn this light off here real quick. still have the light in the room on, but on. There's going to be a strobe coming up here. So that is pretty decent light. And then you've got like a lower setting. And then... strobe looks like there's a little bit of a is that a zoom a little bit of a zoom oh it's your standard Cree square okay and uh, the light itself rotates around I'm gonna turn this light back on so the light rotates and you have a little bit of a, a zoom function. Um, not the highest quality, you know what I mean? Not the highest quality light out there, but it gives you a decent amount of light at least. Um, I hate the square light though, the standard, you know, Cree LED. Um, overall, even with the batteries though, it's not that heavy. Uh, it's really not that heavy and um, soft elastic. I, I don't think it would be the most comfortable thing you've ever had on your head, but I think it wouldn't be the most uncomfortable either. Um, so, Okay, so that's basically the box. Uh, not terribly impressed, as always. I mean, I think that the items in it are useful. I, I, following the theme, though, like I said, they set themselves up with such a broad theme, I think it actually would be hard for them to come up with the exact stuff to match this theme. Let's take a look at their Knife of the Month. Um, it is a handmade Damascus right shirt, Ulu. Now, I love Ulus. I got to do a TDY in Alaska, and I got to go see the actual uh, native Ulu factory there. And that's where I learned about Ulus, was actually in Alaska. And it is, it is a 
native type knife. This one is just covered in oil. This is what's coming off as I wipe the oil off. Um, pretty gross. So the ulu is used by native tribes. Um, I, you know, the whole history of it, I can't, I can't actually remember, but it is, uh, it's a, it's a knife used for um, skinning, for food preparation. It can be used in a fighting style. Um, it's actually a very useful blade, and I really like it. Um, there, you know, I have I have one specifically made for the kitchen. Um, I have it's it it can be used in a in a very outdoors manner. The uh, native um, tribes up in Alaska they they make the like this is their thing. This is their their everything knife, their uh, EDC knife, their hunting knife, their survival knife, um, and you know to watch them hand make them in the, in the, their little factory up there was amazing. But the whole thing is this: I mean, just great blade, great control. You can chop with it, you know, food wise. You can use this to skin. You can use this um, for all manner of of whatever you need to do. This one actually does have like a handmade look i mean but as usual you know this is probably not a great grade of damascus um i it, i mean there's if you look there's like these the mosaic pin is kind of messed up um this is probably a, a nicer quality than the other knives of the month we've seen. And I think this is probably the most useful one we've seen. I can't, I mean, I could not do justice to to the whole history of the Ulu. Because I don't really know it as well. This one's very unevenly done too, though. You have to kind of look at it closely. Um, but it is a very useful knife. Again, I'm sure this is a very production quality Damascus, not, not a real hand forged Damascus. I like this knife of the month better than anyone they've sent so far. This is gonna be an awkward kind of test because there's, there's, you can't really, can't really hold it the way I'd hold a regular knife blade. It just doesn't, uh, It could use a little a little refining but you know it's it's a good edge it's better than it's better than any edge we've seen for their knife of the month so far i think i'm gonna i'm gonna just i think i'm just gonna fine diamond and strop this i can feel a little little burr right there but the sheath is it says always prep um but it's a decent sheath it's you know Uh, I don't know. I take that back because if this was on a belt, it would be very floppy. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the sheath, and I honestly haven't seen a whole lot of Ulus in a sheath like this. Um, but whatever. So there is the survival box for January 23. Really uh, want to know what you guys think of this. I think this is a. I think this is a rough theme for them to. To do, uh, I admire them trying to tackle it honestly, but I think it was hard. I think it was. I think that was a bit, a bit much to you know, big big bite to chew on. So, uh, what do you guys think? What do you think? Thanks, Jason. As usual, you are the man. You are awesome. Not only is he a long-standing Patreon team member, he is an Aussie. Has been supporting this channel with, with stuff for a long, long time. So, Jason is an awesome dude. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope that you will share your thoughts in the comments so we can discuss it. And remember that you are all absolutely awesome, and I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll be back again real soon.